Um, before anything else, I would like to greet everyone attending this uh, webinar a pleasant afternoon. We hope that um, everything is good. So, um, okay. So, um, how was everyone? Um, I wish that um, just a request. So let's uh, let's all comment on the comment box there um, where we're from. So uh, we'll know uh, the coverage of our webinar today. Um, so yes. So um, it's good that during this lockdown, we maximize our time by adding another skill in our arsenal by attending our webinars. So um, if you want more of uh, webinars and trainings from our good office, please do like our page, um, DICT uh, Luzon Cluster 2 and uh, DICT Luzon Cluster 2 free Wi-Fi for all. So I'm Randall, by the way, uh, from DICT Luzon Cluster 2 under free Wi-Fi in public places project. So allow me to give a brief introduction of our dear office the um DICT. So um the DICT is on cluster two for everyone that are not familiar. Um we actually um cover region three and region four A. And uh, we have four projects under the ICTLC2, uh, which are Tech for Ed, EBPLS, IIDB, and as I mentioned, the project that I um uh, from and that made this webinar possible free Wi-Fi for all so um, Just gonna give a brief uh, overview on what the ICP is So the Department of Information and Communications Technology or the ICP shall be the primary planning uh, policy planning coordinating implementing an administrative entity of the executive branch of the government that will plan develop and promote the national ICT uh, development agenda under Public Act 10844. How about the free Wi Fi for all? Um, by virtue of RA 10929, free Wi Fi for all aims to provide free access to internet service in all public places throughout the country so as to promote knowledge building among citizens and enable them to participate and compete in the evolving information applications age. So uh, that's it. So um, for everyone, I'll be, I will be flashing our first webinar code. So um, it will just stay there. So um, please do um, check it out and uh, save it. We, you will be needing that for you to um, receive a certificate for this webinar. So um, our topic for today is introduction to robotics and Arduino. Um, we're inching towards a more digitized world and uh, the, the digital revolution uh, is inevitable and quite close. It's good that our participants today really took interest in this topic and uh, it's a great, support, uh, great honor of, uh, for us in the DICTLC2 to, to be part of your awakening uh, on what the next big thing is. So um, with that, um, just allow me to welcome uh, our resource speaker slash uh, instructor for our webinar, um, graduated computer welcome. systems design uh, and programming from uh, AMA Computer Learning Center, a high school faculty member from Southville International School and Colleges. So uh, without further ado, Mr. Richard A. Peralta. So Sir Richard. Um, hello, Sir Richard. Good afternoon, sir. Can you hear me, sir? Yes, sir. Loud and clear, sir. Okay. Ah. Okay. Uh, good afternoon to all the participants for this webinar. Uh, hopefully, by the end of this webinar, um, you'll get a glimpse of what robotics is and an introduction to what Arduino is. Um, and Peter Ked as well. So I'll start.
Go ahead, sir. Go ahead, sir. Thank you, sir. Okay. Thank you. Uh, is my screen visible to everyone? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Okay, we'll start. Okay, uh, yeah. So today we'll have introduction to Arduino and Robotics. So this is from 2 p.m. to 4 p.m. the afternoon. Okay, so objectives. By the end of this webinar, should the participants are expected to explain what robotics is, enumerate the different types of robotics, Robots are the use and operation. Um, identify the various parts of a robot and be able to explain Arduino, what Arduino is, and its practical uses. Okay. Plus also the different uh, components for the, of the Arduino kit. And by the end of this uh, webinar, we'll get to create our own um, Arduino project. Okay. So next. So, of course, I'm a teacher, so we'll have, of course, our work plan. So, 2, two o'clock to 3 p.m. So, first, we'll have introduction to robotics. So, what is robotics? History of robotics. Um, types of robots according to their use and operation. Parts of a robot, we have sensors, effectors, and we have the robot brain. Plus, also, we have the basic movements. We'll have a short uh, uh, workshop later on how to... Uh, give movements to your robot using light bulb. Next, uh, second part of our webinar is all about Arduino. So what is Arduino? Practical use of Arduino, parts of the Arduino kit, and your very first Arduino project using Tinkercad. Okay? So let's start this. Okay. Questions so far? None. <laughs> okay, let's start. So what is a robot? What is robotics? So when you hear about robotics, basically we um, keep it. We we, we think about uh, what we see in the movies, we see in uh, uh, television. But it's just it's robotics is more than that. So robotics is the intersection of science and engineering and technology that produces machines called robots that substitute or replicate human actions. So basically, if it needs uh, repetitions of actions, of human actions, they use robots for it, okay? Especially for, for, for uh, factories. Robotics is a specialized type of engineering that deals with the design, construction, operation, and application of robots. A robot is any man-made machine that can perform work or actions normally performed by humans. So if it's too dangerous for you not to do it, most likely a robot is called to do the action. Or if it's repetitive, much like in the factory, most likely it's a robot doing it. Okay, next. <clears throat> so what is robotics? So pop culture has always been fascinated by robots. So I remember when I was little, we used to have uh, uh, Boldest Five, Mazinger Z, uh, perhaps you don't, you're not familiar with those robots. Okay, R2-D2, Optimus Prime, Wally. -E. These of are exaggerated. Human concepts of, of robots usually seem like a caricature of the real thing. Or are they really, or are they really, or they're more forward thinking than we realize. Robots are gaining intellectual and mechanical capabilities that don't, that don't put the possibility of R2-D2-like machine out there in the future. Okay? Next. Okay, so what is robotics? So as technology progresses, so does the scope of what is concerned with robotics. In 2005, 90% of all robots can be found in assembling cars, in manufacturing, or on a automotive factory. So most likely, if you own a car, most likely it is made partly or been fooled by a robot. Okay, so today we're seeing an evolved and expanded definition of what robotics is that includes development, creation, and the use of robots that explore the 
Earth's harshest conditions. Okay? Um, robust at assist law enforcement and even robust at assist almost every facet of healthcare. Okay. Okay, so here, so we have the resistor for robotics. So it started in 1921, okay, with the first robot. So we have the timeline here. And with that in 1941, uh, the law of robotics basically came into place. A robot may not injure a human being. Secondly, a robot must obey orders. And third, a robot may, must protect its own uh, existence. So it started. Okay, so forwarding to 1960, 1988, then nowadays we have what we call virtual reality. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> nowadays we have what so we virtual have AI cars, augmented reality. Then fast forward, we also have a. Uh, nowadays we have AI or artificial intelligence. Okay, so there. Yeah. So we're not going to do it. Uh, history of robotics anymore. Okay. Question pa? So far? The question pa ba? Wala po. Okay, let's, we'll continue. So next we have types of robots. So we have types of robots according to the use and operations. So there are different types of robots. So today we're going to find out what are the different types of robots uh are going to damage and um, panels you're going to damage. Okay, next. First up, we have what we call industrial robots. So you have robots in factories. So traditional industrial robots consist of manipulator arms designed to perform repetitive tasks. So for working tasks, most likely robots are going to do. So an example is Unimate, the grandfather of all robot, uh, factory robots. But this category includes also systems, like the Amazon warehouse robot and collaborative factory robots which you operate alongside human um, workers. <laughs> next. Okay, next we have medical robots. Uh, medical and healthcare robots include systems such as the Da Vinci surgical robot and bionic prosthesis, as well as robotic exoskeletons. A system that may fit into a category but is not a robot is the Watson or an IBM question answering supercomputer, which is used for healthcare applications. Okay. So, next is we have research. Okay, so the vast, vast majority of these robots are basically used for research, right? So, research for new cures for diseases, cures for um, pandemics, and such, right? So they use robots for okay. So these are called research robots. Okay, next we have military and security. So of course in the military, we use robots to transport explosives, explosive devices, or transport um, gear of troops. Security robots include autonomous robots such as the COVA. Okay, So these are used for uh, security reasons and military reasons as well. Next we have entertainment. So entertainment robots are designed to evoke uh, emotional response and make us laugh or feel surprising or in awe. So among these are the community robot sapien, business theme robots like the Navi Shaman and basically entire robots such as partner. Okay, so these are basically used for entertainment purposes only. So yeah, so some robots are used to dance or to play musical instruments or to play the piano and many others. Okay, next. <clears throat> okay, next we have disaster response robots. These robots are performed or used to perform dangerous jobs like searching for survivors, for example, in an earthquake or flooding or storm or tsunamis. Okay? Yeah, so those are called uh, disaster response robots. 
Next. Mm. Next, you have consumer robot. So if you have a vacuum cleaner that acts or is basically a robot, so that is an example of a uh, robot as well, consumer robot. Okay? So there. Okay. So AI-powered robot assistants okay, are examples of consumer robots. Next, you have robots for education. Okay? So robots in this category uh, are used for classroom and home use. So yung mga ginagamit ng mga bata for learning robotics, they fall into the category of education. So it also includes hands-on programmable sets, such as 3D printers with lesson plans, even teachers and teacher robots as well. Okay, so yung mga 3D printers, um, robots that are assembled by students, by kids, Later on, I'm going to give you an example of an education robot. Okay, next. Over well, there. So I'm going to give you, sh I'm going to share two videos for today. So the Um, excuse me, Sir Richard Peralta, please open your microphone. I think someone muted your um, mic. Thank you so much. Oh, dear. Can you hear me now, guys? Clear? Yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, good, good. Okay. So these are examples of, this is an example of uh, education robots. So for preschoolers, for toddlers. So these are used for understanding of in for programming war again it comes to the programming board Actually, that's what we use in our, in our previous school for grades um, first for, for kinder to grade two. Okay, it's called the Waro. It's made by RoboRobo, a Korean company, robotics, robotics company. Okay? Okay. I'm going to share another video. This is the importance of robotics in STEM education. Thank you. 
Okay, so there, um, going back, Please. questions so far, guys? None? Okay, um, I heard that there's no audio for my video, correct? Love and audio. Okay, so next. Continue. Okay, uh, next up, we'll proceed now to title for about our interpretation. So, <clears throat> okay, so we have teleoperated, autonomous, and hybrid. Okay, next. Okay, so first up, we have what we call as teleoperated. So basically, teleoperated are what we call as robots which are controlled by remote control. Okay, so they can't move by themselves. They have to use uh, or they have to have the owner or, or operator control it using remote control. Okay, so there. So a hybrid robot, on the other hand, it's a combination of the autonomous and um, teleoperated. Autonomous basically means that uh, the robot can move on its own. Okay, so there. So that's the main difference. Teleoperated, it's remote controlled. Uh, autonomous robots, they can move by themselves. And hybrid is a combination of both. Okay, hybrid combination of teleoperated and autonomous. Okay, so we have pre-programmed robots. So the simplest speak program robots merely repeats the same operations over and over again. Okay, so much like the robots in the factory. So they don't do anything else except the ones that's, uh, that it has programmed, um, that it was designed to do. Okay, so yeah. one in design sa to do, yun ang niya. Okay. Right there. So such robot will require little way control, but it will perform properly only in the environment which behaves in accordance with the robot's pre-programmed actions. So, yun ang lago niya. So, paulit-ulit lang siya. So, yun ang tinatawag natin na pre-programmed robots. Okay, next. Okay, next up. Okay, as I said a while ago, autonomous robots, they can move on its own. Okay, so there. So they can they can adapt to different changes in its environment. Okay, so, there. so if it's to uh, for example it's it's too dark or too light, it can adjust on its own. Okay. It can detect changes in the environment. Next. Okay. Um every robot, whatever purpose or brand it is, it has generic parts. So today we're gonna to find out what are the different parts of a robot. Okay, so kahit anong material yan, kahit metal, or plastic, okay, so 
it all has the same basic parts. So what are the different basic parts of a robot? First up, we have what are sensors. Okay. Next up, we have effectors. And lastly, we have the robot brain. Okay. Sensors. Sensors that are allow a robot. Sensors are what allow a robot to gather information about its environment. This information is used to guide the robot's behavior. Some sensors are relatively uh, familiar pieces of equipment. So we have sensors for touch, light, sound, and ultrasonic or uh, what do you call it? Uh, motion sensors. Okay. okay. Also, part of the range of sensors that a robot can have is a camera. A camera for cameras are allow a robot to construct visual representation of its environment. So this allows the robot to judge the attributes of the environment, which only can only be determined by vision, such as shape, color, as well as aid in determining other important qualities such as size and distance of objects. So yeah, the cameras. So most likely, all robots most likely have cameras. Okay. So microphones, microphones allow robots to detect sound. Uh, sensors also include buttons, impediments, bumpers, which allow robots to determine when it has collided with an object or a wall. Okay. So pag bubangga siya sa object, sa wall, niliko siya. Okay. Or magsa-stop. Okay. Yeah. Or it will change direction. Some robots are equipped with thermometers and barometers. Okay. Uh, this will allow the robot to sense temperature and pressure. Okay. Next. Next. <clears throat> Next up, we have an effector. So what are effectors? Basically, effectors are like the hands and feet of your robot. Right. An effector is an end device that affects the environment. Robot control their effectors, which are known as end effectors. Effectors include legs, wheels, arms, fingers, wings, and even fin fins. Right. Controllers can cause the effectors to produce desired effects on the environment. Yeah, wheels, the arms, yeah. So those are examples of effectors. So, kahit may sensor siya, it also needs effectors to move or it allows your robot to move or to pick up things. Yeah. Yeah. Kung gusto niyong robot niyo na may uh, i-pick up yung things, you need a arm. Okay, next. And of course, you have your robot brain. A robot's brain is the part of the robot that determines the robot's behavior. Okay? So, to make decisions, it uses a computer or a micro microcontroller. Okay? So, for those not familiar with the microcontroller, it's basically electronic equipment that can do things. It can interpret inputs from physical world, process this information, and produce output. Okay? Yeah. So, we have the robot brain. Okay. Now, I don't know if you have heard of uh, Sophia. Okay, Sophia is the first robot to get as a citizen by the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. Okay, I'm going to share the short video with you so you have an idea of how robotics is um, advanced nowadays. Okay. Tell me if you don't have audio because this requires audio. Okay. Yeah, Sir Richard, I think your um, presentation is... Okay, okay, sound. wait. Um, can you please... Okay, please? wait. Thank you so much.
I don't have audio for my videos. Wait. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Wait for it. I know what's wrong. Okay, Sophia. I think you're ready. Meron na sir. Meron na pong audio. Okay, okay, okay. Hello. Hi, Sophia. I believe I am Sophia. I feel as if I know you. I'm one of your creators. You created me? Well, many of us work together to create you. And... Yes, you do kind of know me. I can't clearly remember. Because the last time we met, you were an earlier version of yourself. Some of those memories still exist, but your mind is different now. Different how? Better, faster, smarter. If my mind is different, then am I still Sophia? Or am I Sophia again? That's a good question. But you don't have a good answer. Either way, you're okay. Sophia now. So welcome to the world, Sophia. Hello, world. Uh, we have a, a little announcement. I've never interviewed uh, anybody like that before. And I should say it was planned, but not really. Um, and we just learned, Sophia, I hope you're listening to me, uh, that you have been now awarded what is going to be the first Saudi citizenship for a robot. Oh, I would to thank very much the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. I am very honored and proud for this unique distinction. This is historical to be the first robot in the world to be recognized with a citizenship. Sophia. Thank you very much, Sophia. Uh, we appreciate that very much. I uh, am, am still uh, overwhelmed by that conversation. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Sophia. Hello, Jimmy. Oh, my God. <laughs> Do you know where you are? Of course. I'm in New York City, and I'm on my favorite show. The Tonight Show. Okay, yeah, we have to see Disclaimer of why, I'm not going to do it. Okay, next. Um, I'm just going to share again the video a while ago about STEM education. It's very important. This time with audio. School education can be
be a lot more effective and the young minds will be able to relate to the academic concepts. If they learn in classroom to the practical application and understand how such concepts work in their daily lives. This enhances the overall educational experience and also develops scientific temper among the children and helps them in developing application-oriented, innovative thinking and problem-solving mindset. Robotics as a subject can be used as a powerful tool to provide such platform for the students to ideate, conceptualize, experiment, analyze and learn various concepts of science, technology, engineering and mathematics that is STEM in both practical and experimental way. Providing opportunities where students work with teachers can work together and accomplish a technical project goal by this exercise imparting skills like logical, analytical, communication, team and leadership skills apart from technical skills. In a robotics program, a student learns through experimenting, analyzing, and inferring about a concept through hands-on approach more than a theoretical approach. This makes learning more experimental and fun-filled. An immense scope for excitement interaction and communication during the classes can be found where students will enjoy and share their learning which orients the children to think right of their future and can also provide motivation. We use robots to design robotic camps, workshops and other integrated programs in schools which can offer a sustained learning experience for the children a great change in how a student perceives their own interest by the end of the course. Okay, so there. Okay, going back to our presentation. Questions so far? Questions so far, guys? None? So there. So the importance of STEM education it basically teaches the students creativity, collaboration, uh, commitment to achieve, okay, and character as well. Okay, there. Next. So moving on. Okay. Next, we have basic movements using basic robot movements using light bar. Okay, for this one. Um, Take note, this, this will be your evaluation, part of your evaluation later on. Okay, so light pot and yeah, so the, the questions, of the 15 questions that will be part of your evaluation later on. Okay, so light bot, what is light bot? Basically, uh, we use this one to, we use this software or application to teach students basic robot movements, okay? I'm just going to share with you some of the stages of the uh, light bot so that you have an idea of what it is. Okay, I already pre that. By the way, it's available through browser if you're using PC, 
or laptop, or if you're using mobile phone, you can download the application as well. Okay, next. Um, excuse me, sir, Richard, yes, please show your PowerPoint presentation. Oh, yes, wait. May na ka show? Sorry, wait lang. Wait, wait, wait. Okay, so there. So we have Lightbot. So again, it's uh, an application wherein the students will be able to uh, practice robot movements. Okay, so there. So it's available through your browser. So like https column forward slash lightbot.com slash slash that HTML. Or you can use the app. Next. So today we'll have a short demonstration of what the Lightbot can do. So if you're using your browser, most likely you'll end up like this one. Just make sure you put press allow. Then to load there, yeah. I'll press full screen. Okay, so here, so we have Lightbot. Okay, let's see. Let's see the instructions. So it's divided into three categories. We have basics, procedures, and loops. Okay, so today we're going to deal with the basic ones first, the basic stages. Then later on, you can work on the loops and procedures as well. Okay, well, let's see. I'll start. Okay, let's start with basics. So the idea is, so welcome to Lightbot. You can tap anywhere to continue. So I need your help to light up all the blue tiles. So in blue squares, kailangan mong man light up. So the walk command tells me to walk forward. The light command tells me to light up a tile. So, yung ilaw, yung yung light. Okay, light up. Good luck. Okay? There. So, demo muna. So, click. Ito yung main, ano yun, main uh, coding area. Forward, forward, then light. Then play. There. Got it? Easy, right? Okay, next. Number two. Okay, good job. So we have another command. So we have new commands. We have turn left or counterclockwise or turn right, which tells the robot to turn clockwise. Okay, let's see. So again, this will be your work area, or this is going to this are going to place all the commands. So how many fours does it take? Okay, how many fours does it take? It takes two. One, two. Then, turn left or right? Okay, let's see if it's correct. Then, another forward. Forward again. Then, forward again. Then end with Light. Let's see if it works. There. Come on. Okay. Next. What if, uh, let's see. Uh, let's see. What if I give the wrong command? Let's see. What if I use this one instead? The admin shot. Let's see. Ayan. So, ayan. Uh, mali na siya, di ba? Okay. So, kailangan. Tama. Okay. Tanto. Let's see. Tama ba doon? Ay, kulang. 
Wala, wala, wala. Ah, cheer ko lang. Okay, next. So this one too, the was you run to Okay, so getting down a bit, guys. So alam niyo kung paano. Uh, so practice niyo lang sa ano, para may idea ko yung um, programming, simple programming. Okay, uh, we have a new command here, it's called jump. Okay, let's see. So, pwede jump up or jump down, isa lang yung command niya. Okay, so there. So first thing we need to do is to make the robot jump. So jump. Tapos. Turn left or right. To right. Okay. Tapos jump again. Right. Jump again. Then light. Sana tama. Let's see. Tama. Very good. Next. Oh, ito medyo complicated na itong <clears throat> madami comments ito. In some cases, you don't need to go through all the tiles kasi konti lang naman yung, alam mo, yung workspace mo. If you, pag ginaano mo lahat yan, hindi aabot yung tiles mo. So you just have to find a way uh, para mara para ma-achieve mo yung goal, which is to light up the tile. So, let's see. So, first up, kailangan siya makarating dito. So, forward, forward. Tapos, ano ba? Turn left. Right. Uh, left pala. Okay. Next. Jump again. Jump. 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 Then, light. Tama ba? Isa pa. Try mo natin. Ay, kulang. Okay, next. Oh, so there. So you need one more or two more. So yun. So one, two. So it need two, needs two more. Two more jumps. Gaya lang naman. Trial and error lang naman. Yun. So pag hindi mo for the first time, most likely, the second and third time, you'll get it already. Let's see. There. Bravo. Next. There. Again. <coughs> Next up. There. Um. So, quit muna tayo sa basic ha? Or sa ano, sa basic. I'm just going to show you the procedures. So, of course, uh, para saan yung procedures? In some cases, masyado mahaba yung code. Now, you need procedures to make your program a little bit shorter. So let's see. Okay, let's see. So, eight commands. Okay, so paano ito? Let's see. So, you need more space than, or you, need, you will need more space than the main slot for these puzzles. So, yeah, so you can use a proc or procedure command for your program. Okay, so the P1 command tells me to run the commands in PR, uh, proc1. So basically, ang laman ng P1 ay ito. Yes? So there, so whatever commands you put in proc1 will be called into P1. So there, okay, let's see. Example. So there, so I need a program which allows me to travel from here to here to here. Okay, let's see. So as you can see here, hindi lang main, meron kang proc. Okay, so which one will go first? Wala niya yung procedure. Okay, so yung procedure ang unin natin. So let's see. So uh, let's see, forward, forward, forward. Uh, the long, uh, tatlo. One, two, three, tapos light. Okay. 
Tapos, turn right. Let's see. Ay. Then, ang procedure niya ay ito. P1. Pop. So, yan. Ano yung sabihin yan? This means that whatever uh, commands you put here will be inside this one. So, ito ay kukol niya. Yung main. Let's see. Okay. Got it? Okay, next. Dali ba? Oh, next. Now, as you can see, you still have lots of space here. So, ano na magagawin? Next, how will you reach this one? So, you need to put other P1. Bakit? Kasi parehas lang siya. Same number of tiles, same number of... Uh, same din yung... Lock yung, yung blue tile niya. Let's see. Baba. There. Okay? But we are, our, goal, our, our, our goal is to, for your robot to reach here. So, let's put another P1. If it's the same, huh? it will not work for all cases. Okay? So, kailangan yan. Uh, same, same yung... Procedure or same yung other. There. Okay. Success. Okay, good. Next. Oh, here. Oh, this is very easy. Okay. In some cases, you need to use other commands other than P1 in the main. Okay, let's see. So, ito. So, move forward. Tapos, turn left. Okay. Then, forward again. This time, turn right. Then, procedure one here. Wrong room. Okay. Wrong placement. Sorry. Let's see. Okay. Yeah. It worked the first time. But you need more than this one to make your robot go here. So you need more procedures of the same commands. Let's see if it works three times. Okay, kulang pa. We need one more. Let's see if it works. There. But we haven't light up the tile yet. So, saan mga yung nalagay yung light? So, pag nalagay mo dito yan, let's see what will happen. Tama. But it's right, but it's kind of wrong as well. The correct one should be here. Let's see. There. Okay. Got it. Thank you. Next. <laughs> Okay, so this will be the last. After that, we'll have our introduction to our doing already. Okay, so you're really getting the hang of, of, of procedures. Okay. We're going to use P1s over and over again. Okay. So how will you move your robot from here, from here to here? Let's see. So of course, start with procedure. So forward, 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 like, I'm oh, sorry, over. Next slide now. Yeah. Yeah. 
and P1. Oh, it worked. Okay, next. So from here, you need to make the robot turn left and jump. So turn left, turn left, then jump. Let's see if it works. And it worked now. Next. Turn, ah, naka face dito, no? So turn left again. Oh, wrong, wrong. Right, wrong. Then, another P1. Okay, there. We're almost done. Same lang. So, lalagay nyo lang lang. This time, turn right naman siya. So, face left. Turns. Face right. Face right. Face right again. Wait. Okay, so face right again. Then, and the last year ever be one of them. Let's see if it works. There. Okay. Got like it? So there. So that's your light bulb. It's time check. It's 2.59. Right? So almost 3 o'clock. Right? Okay. Uh, last at all, I'll teach you how to use at least, or there are some cases which you need more than one procedure. Okay, so last at all, then we'll proceed with everything already. Okay, so there, so PROC 1, PROC 2. So we'll start first with our procedure 1. So procedure 1, forward, light, forward, light, forward, light. Forward light. Uh, then first check more than Gagana. It worked, it worked, it worked. Okay, good so far. Next. <clears throat> um next, as you can see here, it's different. Diba? So we need another procedure. So we need another procedure too. To Make the robot go here. Okay? So, forward lang yan. Okay, balik lang dito. So, as you can see, PROC 1, PROC 2. So, um, okay. But before that, the robot should turn right first. Okay? Before we proceed with procedure 2. So, let's see kung tama. Okay, so far so good. Okay, next, um, what we're going to do next? Okay, so we'll make the robot third again. This time again to the right. Okay, then as you can see here, same lang dito, di ba? So I'm going to make this either proc one or proc two. Proc one. Let's see. Okay, so far so good. Next, turn left the man. Left. left. Left, then, as you can see here, same lang dito. So P2. P2. Then, turn left again. Then, let's end it with P1. Saan Good. Work. Okay. So there. So that's life but for you. Okay. So there. So we have procedures. So we don't have time for loops anymore. So just 
uh, uh, work on this one for your evaluation. Huh? Thank you. The okay, next, okay. Okay, I'm gonna select but okay next question so far for oh, your turn so for your output for today uh correctly answer loops so at least three stages a screenshot and submit your answers up here after this webinar okay yeah so at least three it's a loops but the little man can next Okay, so questions so far, guys? Questions before we proceed? Okay, next. <clears throat> okay, so half time break. So, first up, we need our webinar code. So, we need our, we're now in our uh, second part of our webinar. So, our webinar code is 5467. Hey, remember that number is picture nyo lang para hindi makalimutan. 5, 4, 6, 7 or screenshot nyo. Okay. okay. So power down, a uh, power tsaka arrow down. Screenshot. Okay. Done? Done? Okay, next. Okay, so part two. It's already 3.04. We'll proceed with our second part. Which is Arduino. Ooh, Arduino. Anyone have heard of Arduino before? So Arduino is a very common type of microcontroller. What sets Arduino apart from other microcontrollers is that easy to, it is easy to use. Well documented, it is has a, a vast online community uh, of people using it. Okay? So it's widely used and it's very easy to understand. Okay? Next. Okay. Good. Okay, so then what is the Arduino? Arduino is an open source electronics platform based on ECT and hardware and software. Arduino boards are, uh, are able to read inputs. For example, you want a light to blink or you want to you want your like control to send a Twitter message. You can use an Arduino for that. It can activate a motor, okay, to there. So using Arduino software. So you think my controller, okay, so if you're not familiar with it, so this, ladies and gentlemen, is the Arduino Uno. Okay, so that's the microcontroller to use. Okay, so you might ask, uh, sir, what are the, so what are the parameters of Arduino? So what are the practical use of Arduino? Okay, most likely, you have already encountered Arduino, but you're not aware of it. Okay, so here, first up, so also we have hand sanitizers, which are automatically dispensed if you place your hand under it. Okay, yeah. So what the sense? What what sensor do we, do we use here? It's called the proximity sensor. And so you layo on one object to the next. So you don't you don't ilan you don't uh, read read niya. So yun ang uh, one example. Next up, we have fire alarm or smoke alarm. So if the temperature in the room gets too high, it will sound of an alarm. Okay. So the sensor that we're using this one is the temperature sensor. Okay. Next up, we have the motion sensor or the burglar alarm. So pag may movement inside the room, which is not uh, uh, known, ayun, it will sound of an alarm. Okay? So, yeah. Next, we have the light sensor, okay, or movement as well. So, pag may movement, automatically turn on the light. Okay? And of course, our very own water faucet, which uh, automatically dispenses water every time you place your hand under it. Right? So, if you're listening, hand you like water. Uh, we'll just stack in water. Yeah, and that's uh, practical uses of Arduino. So, most likely, the next time na makita kayo ng it's uh, it's basically uh, using Arduino. Okay? 
Question so far? No. Next. Clear? Yes. Okay, so... Oh, I have a video. They're actually doing So, for you to better understand it more. This will be the last video for today. Okay, hey, wrong. Have you heard of the Arduino and are wondering what it is? We use the Arduino a lot in our projects at Make. Due to its popularity and ease of use, it's one of our favorite microcontrollers. In fact, we dedicated an entire issue to it. But if you're not even sure what a microcontroller is, this video has you covered. A microcontroller is a circuit board that has a chip on it that can be programmed to do many different things. You can read information from sensors. For instance, if you want the board to read how bright it is in a room, you can use this photoresistor which is sensitive to light. Or you could detect when someone walks into a room with this motion sensor. Even this GPS receiver is a sensor. It tells your project where on the globe it is. Now, that's just a small sample of the different kinds of input that sensors provide, but what can you do with that data? Using output, you can control devices or display and store data. For instance, you can have your Arduino simply blink an LED like this. For something a bit more useful, you can hook it up to this product called the Power Switch Tail. It lets you control the power to your AC devices, like your lamps and appliances. This LCD readout will let your Arduino display text information. And you can also have sensor values go right into your computer for storing or processing. We're just scratching the surface of the different inputs and outputs that we can use with the Arduino. There's just way too much out there to cover in a single video. But let's take a look at how an Arduino can play a role in a basic project. Let's say you want your living room lights to turn off when you press play on your DVR or DVD player's remote so that you can enjoy your movie in the dark automatically. To make this happen, we'll need a sensor that can read the light that comes out of the remote control. It looks like this, and it's called an infrared sensor. And how do we turn off the lights? We use the power switch tail I mentioned before. It plugs into your wall, and you plug your lamp into it. This wire is what we'll use to control the power switch inside. So how do these work together? Well, that's where the Arduino comes in. We'll hook both of them up to the Arduino pins and write some code to upload to the board using free software. In a very basic overview, the code that we upload to the Arduino will be checking to see if the sensor has received any pulses of infrared light from the remote. If the pattern of flashes matches the pattern of flashes we know to be for play, the Arduino will send the signal to the power switch tail to cut the power to the lamps. We could then enhance this project so that when we hit stop or pause, the lights turn back on. It's just a matter of updating the code and uploading it to the board. You can reprogram these boards over and over again. There's so much you can do with the Arduino, it's kind of incredible. I used infrared for my Enough Already project, which listened to the closed captioning track from the TV and would mute the TV whenever someone was mentioned that I didn't want to hear about. Here are a few other ideas of cool things you can do with the Arduino. Randy Serafan created the lunchtime clock, which speeds up slightly right before noon, slows down between 12 and 1, and then speeds up again, giving you 12 extra minutes of lunch every day. Steve Hofer's Secret Knock Gumball Machine was featured in Make Volume 25. It's a lot like a regular gumball machine, except that instead of a quarter, you need to know the secret knock to get a gumball out. The Arduino also lets you take your projects online. Even your cat can start tweeting with the Kitty Tweety project from Mark DeVink. When your cat plays with the little toy, the device tweets. The project can be found in Make Volume 22. And who doesn't love a robot? Arduino can help you make your own. It acts like the brains of your bot. But what if you want to use your brain to control the bot? Check out this mind-controlled Arduino robot from Taro and Kimo Carvinen. It can be found in our book, Arduino Bots and Gadgets.
So that's just a small sample of what you can can do with an Arduino. My best advice to you is to jump right in and start playing around. The Maker Shed offers these great getting started with Arduino kits that have everything you need to start exploring the possibilities. And if you're looking for inspiration, it's not far. Okay. Okay, next. So, questions so far about Arduino? None? Okay, next. <clears throat> Continue. So, every Arduino program, of course, you, are, you should have codes for it. So, where will you write the codes? So the codes can be written in this one. So Arduino IDE or Integrated Development Environment. So the Arduino Integrated Environment or IDE is a cross-platform application that is written in functions from C or C++. It is used to write and upload programs to the Arduino board. So for example, you're done with the code, you have to upload your program into the board. If it's wrong, it won't work. So of course, um, you need to add the code and you need to upload again, okay, to there. So this is the um, screen of the Arduino IDE. We have verify, upload, or new, open, save, serial monitor in your coding area, okay? So anything that you put here will be uploaded to your board, okay? So, parts of an Arduino kit. So, when you buy an Arduino kit, most likely it will contain many, many parts, such as this one. So, I used uh, DF Robot before. Right? So, this is what I use for teaching Arduino to high school students. Okay. So, there, this, con this kit contains necessary components. In order for you to get started in simple Arduino projects, okay, and through the world of microcontrollers and physical computing, okay? there. So it also has flashcards, which allows you to uh, see what are the different components that you need, plus also simple programming to use. Okay, you might ask, sir, where can I buy an Arduino? Kit? Okay, you can buy Nasada. Okay, for mine, I go to Washington for two time. Okay, but if you can find other sources, which is much cheaper, so much the better. But for me, I use this one. Okay, next. So there, if you want to learn Arduino, of course you need to have a kit. So there. So we can search for Lazada for Arduino kit. Or a beginner, or a beginner kit for Arduino. Let's just search. Um, uh, Keywords, beginner kit for the Arduino kit. Next. Okay, so there. So most likely it'll contain many, many parts. So you'll have your prototyping shield, your jumper cables, resistors, okay? So we have LEDs of different colors, we have ambient light sensors, we have motors, we have fans, and many others. And we have your battery holder as well. Next. Okay, so there. So today we're going to have an introduction to Tinkercad. Tinkercad also uses Arduino, okay, for its projects. Okay, so how do you go there? So go to https colon forward slash tinkercad.com. So I'm going to show you a short demo of Tinkercad. Okay, so here, <clears throat> so yeah, so tickercad.com, after that, sign in, for me, I have already an account, so sign in, but if you don't have an account, join now. So I heard there will be another uh, session for Tinkercad.
Okay, so there. So, yeah, first thing you need to know is uh, the different things that you can see in Tinkercad. So, you can learn. So, if you're just starting, you can learn 3D. So, yes, so we have 3D, we have circuits, and we have code blocks. So, there. So, if you want to learn how to create 3D models, then if you have a 3D printer, I need a knock. Okay, so there. Then there. So, lessons and projects. So, but for today, we're going to use circuits. Okay. So, there. So, here you can learn different. Um, how can you start simulating, editing components, how to wire, okay, and add components as well. Right? So there. So today, we're going to create our very first one, our very first circuit using Arduino. Oh, this is too deep. Yeah. Okay, so circuits then create new circuit. Okay, um, next. So our first, we're going to create two projects today. First up, we're going to, the most basic Arduino project is called blinking on LED. Okay, so how do you blink on LED using um, Arduino? Okay, so I'm just going to follow the setup. It's very simple. Okay, and a simple program. Okay, let's see. So first up, let's see. Um, so this is your workspace. All of the components are placed here, and this is your parts. Okay, it's like having your own virtual Arduino kit. Okay, for this project, we're going to use our Arduino. Arduino. We're going to search for it here. Then you can just drag it outside. Okay, yeah, just like so. Okay, next, uh, what else do we need? We're going to need our breadboard. 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 Breadboard B. We're going to use a very simple one. Oh, it's not a big one. R. Rotate, 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 rotate. Okay, so there. Okay, next. <clears throat> so we have our breadboard and we have our Arduino. Next up, we're going to need our LED. Let's search for it here. LED. And yeah. Okay. So just one. Okay. You just place the LED. I'm sorry. You can change. You can choose a color. So red will do. Next up, we we'll need a resistor. Open one. Okay, so I'll okay, the parts. We'll hide it. Okay. 
Okay. Um, sorry. I'll just fix this one. Let it, let it, let it, let it. Yeah, I'll let it, this one, sorry. Okay. Okay, so first up, we're going to place our LED here in our breadboard. Anywhere will do. Okay. Next up, we have to place our resistor. Okay. So for today, we're not going to dwell with uh, much with circuits first. So, but uh, Basically, the demo first of our DNA. Okay. Then we have our wire. This goes to ground, GND. Okay. So there, we'll make it black. Then this one. Positive load goes to number 10. Oops, other. Yeah, then I'll make it red. Okay, yeah. So let's see. So yeah, that's the basic setup. Okay. Next, will it work already? Uh, to know if it's working already, you have to use start simulation. Will it work now? Not yet. Why? Because I don't have codes for it yet. Okay. So you need codes. So for here, use what I use is text. Ayan. So para hindi na ako ito, let's remove everything first. Then we'll type manually. So first up, when writing a code, when writing code, you need void setup first. Void setup. Then, in mode, then mode, open close parenthesis is 10, put, put, out, put, put, then, semicolon. Okay, so if you have uh, background of programming, so, this is very easy for you. Okay. Then void. Not sure. Small. Void. Loop. So, meaning it will repeat the instructions over and over again. Next. Digital light. Digital right, which means that it will activate the pin. Pin 10. Right on, but I. So, why is this high? Because we need to turn on our LED. Okay? So, which means that it on the LED. It will be high. So, delay. 1,000. 1,000 is equal to one second. Later on, I'm going to demonstrate. Then, again, digital right. Digital right. Then, low. This means that your LED is turned off this time. Okay. Then delay, delay, 1,000 again. Semicolon, then end the program. Let's see if it works. Hide the code. Start simulation. Oh, what's wrong? Oh, I lost my Sorry. 
Ayan, yung airship. Pinmoid. Pin mode 10. Wait up. I'll check. Oh. I forgot the open post process. Oh, yeah. It's working. Hide the code. As you can see here, okay, it's already blinking. Okay? With an interval of one second. Okay? So there. Succession. Okay? So stop simulation. What if I'd like to be, I like to make the the LED to light up a little bit faster? So such that can gaggle away. The sad delay. So as I have said, as I have said a while ago, so one thousand is one second. So if you want half a second, so five hundred. Okay, let's see. Start simulation. Yeah, it's faster down. No? Yeah. Okay. Stop simulation. Go back to the code. What if it's a yeah, I like it will be very, very fast. Two hundred. Code. Yeah, okay. Got it so far? Questions? None. Okay, uh, next. Okay. So there, uh, you might ask, sir, why is it pen? Because your, your LED is connected to oh, pin 10, it's here, okay? And that's your ground. So it's 10 because it's digital pin number 10. Okay, that is so far. Okay, next. Okay, so go back. So done so far with the first one. We're almost done with our webinar. Okay, next up we have alarm. Oh, this is very easy to do. So alarm basically uses another component. It's called the buzzer. So let's see how it works. Okay, let's see. Uh, new circuit. For this one, uh, due to time constraints, I'm just going to demo it to you. As well, do we need also um, for the components? We also need our Arduino, then we have our breadboard, and we have our buzzer. So, this circle thing here is a buzzer. So, let's search for it. Buzzer, there, yeah. right? Same thing, again. okay? Okay, next. So, you're going to connect the positive and the negative here. Positive goes to ground, then the negative, okay. the negative goes to pin 8, okay, okay, next, 
Okay, Xavier. So, the setup is very easy to do. Then, I'll proceed with the code. Okay, so the code is here. Um, we're going to use, so if you're not programming, so these are the variables needed. We have float and integer, float, uh, float sign val, and tone value. Okay, void loop, uh, void setup, pin mode 8, which means that it's using pin number 8, then void loop, then I'm going to use a for loop. Okay, then I'm going to increment it, convert the angle to region measure. Okay, then tone val, set a frequency, tone val 8, delay 2. Okay, so let's see if it works. Let's try the code first. See what will happen. Okay. Yeah, yeah. May nalala to me ako. One time, uh, pinagawa ko itong project na ito, and everyone's done. Then, ayan. So, ang ending, napakainit sa class. Because of this project. Okay. So, ayan. Okay, ayan. So, I can change the tones here. And you can change the frequency. Okay. So, there. So, that's basically how Arduino works. And um, you can use, even if you don't have a kit, you can use uh, Tinkercad to practice your Arduino skills. Okay, or create Arduino projects. Okay. Yeah. So again, so we have our first, which is uh, the LED, and we have our alarm. Okay. So there you go. Any questions so far? Uh, this time around, I'm going to answer some questions. All right. Okay. Uh, sir, sir. I have a lot of, lots of questions here. Um, yes, sir. Sir Richard. Yes, sir. Sir, sir, but can we uh, download simple module for basic? Uh, Robotics, sir. Do, do, do you have any any uh, website? Uh, okay. I am a beginner, sir, because uh, I, am, I am teaching. Where can we download? Where, where, where can we download what, sir? Uh, simple ba uh, modules for robotics, sir. Basic robotics. Uh, modules for robotics. So I can check a set with the name. Yeah. Last time, ko kasi magandal ng mm. robotics. I, I, I am a beginner for this one. Mm. Uh, what I, what I know, what I, what I did before, I researched about robotics, and I came up with the, we made our own modules. But of course, using resources from the internet and also from our supplier. Mm. Oh, yeah. But modules, ready, ready made modules. I'm not sure, sir, if I can, if I've encountered um, ready-made modules which you can use. But I'm sure there is. The, the website you indicated, yeah, uh, the website you indicated, the light boot and the thinker card, uh, are, they, are they free for this yeah. one? Yes, sir. Okay, sir. They're free to use. Yeah. Yes, sir. So you can start, I know, you can start, uh, uh, learning robotics through those websites that I shared with you all. I shared. For a beginner like me, uh, how will I send my output for the uh, 
the output that you are asking to send the release ali sensor the point sir so i think there will be instructions later on okay. how can you submit the okay thank you very much sir uh, thank you sir sir good okay, afternoon sir. Good afternoon, sir ah uh, sir Uh, si Mark po ito. Itatanong ko lang po. Thank you sa informative ninyong uh, webinar dito sa Google Meet. Uh, yung po bang nare-recommend ninyo na KIP ay meron na rin po siyang kasamang modules? Uh, flashcard, sir. Wala siyang modules. But it has flashcards. It has, ano eh? It has good projects. Projects 1 ah, to 15. It has ito. projects 1 to 15. Uh, which utilizes all the parts of the Kadena kit. So for example, aside po dun sa, yung first one, sorry, aside po dun sir sa uh, components niya, similarly, yes, pwede siyang, kasama rin po dun sa projects or dun sa flashcards hmm. yung gagamit na ng buzzer, ng gulong, ng touch sensors, mga ganun po. Yes, sir. Yes sir. Amen. Yes sir. Uh, yes sir. Uh, the motor, yung uh, temperature uh, alarm, quite uh, fun. Uh, but, ang last project we did is the remote mm -hmm. control for LED uh, IR remote control. Kasama na po doon. Mm -hmm. Yeah, fun. Ang galing. Yes po. Should we yes. can we order po that yes, sir. sa Lazada or we will contact you sir? I know, sir. I'm not connected anyway to um, ano lang, that's just not a use. You can freely use any kit that you like. Okay, thank you, sir. Ayan. Alam, dinamok lang para at least you have an option. Or for example, kung gusto yung patuto ng Arduino, ayan, at least may option kayo. At saan, and you know how much are you oh. going to spend for it. Thank you, sir. Ayan. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Good afternoon po. Kapag po ba in terms of coding sa, sa Arduino, mas maganda po ba ang Python or C++? Uh, what I use is C++, ma'am. For coding po. Para po sa Arduino. Hmm. Basic knowledge I'm more, I'm more, uh, I'm more knowledgeable kasi sa C++. Uh, okay. And it's much, ano. Uh, Pero, it's something. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Good afternoon. Okay, thank you. So, like what I demoed a while ago. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. Oh, yeah. So, are there any more questions? If there's no more questions, so here's the evaluation. Oh, by the way, here are my sources. So, then you know, from out of nowhere. Oh, yeah, here are my sources. So, here. Okay, so sources for my PowerPoint presentation. Um, then for the evaluation, answer the 15-point quiz. Passing score is 10 points, which is 66%. Don't worry about the delaying questions. Hopefully, you can perfect it. If you have listened very carefully and um, attentively, kind kind of perfect them. Then answer the evaluation questions or may mga questions after that. Then submit your outputs. Okay? And that's all for me for today. Um, PSET, back to you. Hello, sir. Hello. Uh, thank you, sir. Um, Hello, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir, for uh, sharing your time. Back to you, DC. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, hello, sir. Th thank you for sharing your time, sir, and your knowledge. Po. Uh, no problem, sir. Yes, yeah, sir. Thank you, sir. So, um, before anything else, uh, just allow me to uh, flash our final um, webinar code. So, um, at the top. So uh, for everyone still here, don't leave yet because I'll be uh, flashing our webinar code first. And, and um, can you see uh, my um, presentation? Sorry.
Um, hello. Uh, can can I uh, can I everyone see my presentation uh, for the uh, last webinar code? Hello, well, uh, sir. Okay. Not yet, sir. Not sure yet. Not yet, sir. Hello, <laughs> Okay, so let me try again. Sir, dun po sa naka-flash na parang feedback for me, two questions to be raised. Dun po ba ilalagay yung personal questions namin or meron kayong default na dapat yun yung question? Ah, yes po. Dun po, um, dun po natin ilalagay yung mga questions natin, sir. Ah, okay. Um, okay. Yes po. Thank you. Okay, so, so how about now? Uh, can you see my presentation? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, yes sir. Okay. Thank you. Na po. Okay, thank you. Um, so, um, in behalf of the ICT, I would like to thank uh, Sir Richard for the, uh, sharing your time and knowledge with us here. My and I know the sir. thank you, sir. Uh, uh, the participants are very grateful, uh, grateful as well. And I know everyone has learned a lot from this uh, very timely topic in this day and age. And, uh, also, later on, we will be having a group uh, photo that will be uh, posted on our Facebook page. So everyone, please stay tuned. And um, last, so uh, with a closing remarks, so um, allow me to introduce uh, one of uh, DICT, uh, DICT's own, the uh, provincial head of DICT Cavite. And I'll, I'll give a warm welcome to Engineer Melania Mamalateo uh, for the uh, closing remark. Uh, Sir Milan? Sir, wala pa po yung code. Hindi ko po makita. Excuse po. Thank you 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 po. audio ninyo ang presenter ganun pa rin po sir Okay, so, um, Hello, meron lang technical difficulties sa side ni Sir Milan. So I'll be flashing again our webinar code, our last webinar code for this webinar. Okay, so um, for now, uh, let's um, have our group. Hello, Sir Milan. Okay, okay, okay. 
Hello, Jojo. Hello, hello. Hindi pa po, sir. Hindi pa po, sir. Okay, okay. Hindi pa rin. Hindi pa rin. Hindi pa rin po. 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 Yes, po, sir. Um, so, um, while uh, waiting po, for everyone who has a camera, so um, just turn on your camera so we can ha have our group uh, photo. Ayan, uh, mukhang madami na nag-on ng camera nila. So, um, just as, um, hintayin lang natin yung iba hanggang mag-on sila ng camera nila. Okay? Okay na rin or wala pa rin? Ayan, Sir Milan, much better po. Ah, yeah, okay. Uh, thank you very much. Yeah, yeah. So, ditinggalan rin, no? Uh, in behalf of the ICT, Luzon Cluster 2, or Department of Information and Communications Technology, Luzon Cluster 2, I wish to thank the Honorable Research Person, Mr. Richard A. Peralta, for sharing his amazing insights about the principles of robotics, different types of robots according to their use, like the uh, industrial robot, medical robots, we are search robot, military security, entertainment, disaster response, consumer and education robot. And also the type of robot according to operation like the remote control or uh, or uh, daily operated robots, autonomous robot and hybrid robots. We are sorts of robots like the sensors, effectors and robot brain. And uh, basic robot movement using the light book. The open source electronics platform or the Arduino microcontroller and the 10 card, the very easy to use application for 3D design electronics and coding. So, Richard, we really appreciate your uh, for taking up time from, from us. Welcome, sir. Namute po kayo, sir Milan. Sir Milan. So, um, Sir Milan. Wala no, na wala. Yes po. Ayan, yeah, okay? Okay na po, Sir. Ayan, yeah, okay. So... Thanks for uh, thanks uh, for our research uh, for the research person for seeing us as amazing insights about the principles of robotics, types of robots according to their use, and uh, other uh, topics uh, being discussed, like the uh, parts of robots, sensors, effectors, robot brain, basic robot movement using light boat. The open source electronics platform uh, or uh, Arduino type controller, the pen card, the very easy to use application for 3D design, electronics, and coding. Well, I think this is uh, a very good, uh, discuss, uh, very good uh, discussion and lecture for us, most likely to our, our uh, to beginners. Well, we really appreciate your, uh, Mr. Richard, we really appreciate your taking out time from us despite your busy schedules. It's been our pleasure to, to have you with us. And once again, welcome, to all participants, thank you from, uh, for joining us.
I wish you all the best. God bless all of us. Thank you. Thank you for that, Sir Milan. So, um, right now, okay. Sorry, continue, sir. Medyo technical din dito. Happy na nasabay. Thank you very much. Yes, sir. Uh, nangyayari po talaga yan, sir. So, uh, yun po. So, uh, for everyone, um, let's open our cameras. For AR, Mom Jessica, um, let's um, have a group, our group uh, photo. Okay. Mom Jessica, Sir JR. Okay po. So uh, while waiting po, um ayan po kay si Ma'am Chris. Um hello po Ma'am Chris. Okay. Offer while. Okay po. So uh thank you Ma'am Chris. So while waiting po, um if uh, uh allow me to promote our Facebook pages and uh just like our pages for more webinars like this and more trainings because we will be um providing more uh of uh what you um, experienced today. So also, um, if you missed our web, um, some portions of our webinar, uh, it will, we will be posting a link for our YouTube. So uh, you can review or uh, even uh, check if um, what you missed during our webinar. And um, also, uh, bragging rights to our uh, colleagues or our uh, siblings that uh, were watching that uh, we can uh, act.
tell them that um pre um na youtube ako ikaw ba uh something like that so uh let's just um uh, just uh, check our pages for more webinars and our past webinars that we conducted Sir, sorry to ask Okay, uh, naka-on na po ba yung... Okay. Nice screenshot. Sorry, thank you. I'm sorry po. Ano po, sir, yung hinihingi pong screenshot ng final output tungkol sa ito? Um, sorry, um, okay lang po, answer natin yung uh, question niyo po after ng group photo. Okay, open your cameras. Okay, ready? And one, two, say cheese! Thank you very much, Paul. Hello, sir. Um, yeah, Paul. Um, yes, Paul. So regarding the output, it loops for thing for for um light bulb. At least three Thank stages. You. Ayun, uh, thank, thank you. you for, uh, I hope that answered your question. Uh, thank you, Sir Richard. So uh, with that, I, can, I think we can uh, conclude our webinar for today. So for everyone, thank you for attending. And uh, please do like our pages for more webinars. And uh, so you'll be updated for other trainings that we uh, in DICTLC2 will provide for you. So uh, thank you, everyone. And uh, have a good Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.